If I'm right, you have done about seven internships in your college, and most yeah. of them were, I, I guess, off campus, right? Right. So, how did you apply to these opportunities, and more importantly, like, how did you sort of, you know, prepare yourself for this all these internships? So when I started, I think uh, I I never I never thought of a job. Uh, so I never took placements in college. Uh, so that that was mm-hmm. one of the things that I think uh, I I did good to myself because I, I never knew what placements are uh, are going to look like. I thought it was just you know a lot of recruiters just coming and sitting, and then you just give an interview. So that's not how it works in a lot of colleges. A lot of colleges they make you sit and do assignments for placements, yeah. and they give you some sort of <laughs> practical training that's mandatory apparently and uh, i knew this uh, this was beneficial after 2 years of my decision initially uh, that somehow benefited me because i could do a lot of things than attending these placement seminars which are utter bullshit again teaching the same dsa and the same system yeah. design stuff again and again and again and uh, i think that was really a good decision i i don't think i'm not uh, asking anyone to do this <laughs> please don't do it uh, there are not <laughs> much opportunities out there it's better you uh, you get recruiters uh, from the on campus and yeah show your talent and shine that's probably it but it was different in my case don't do this shit so what i did was a bit different so i took the risk because i wanted to go for masters so everyone in my family wanted me to go for masters <laughs> so there was obviously uh, no worry about the job either i get it or not so that was the kind of stuff so when i started i started doing a lot of projects i had lots of time to do projects just because i did not have to do something that's job oriented probably if there was mm-hmm. something like that i would have also started a rat race and gone into proper uh, lead code and you know do some grind on some 700 800 mm-hmm. uh, lead code hard medium questions <laughs> so i i am happy that i didn't do uh, do it that way i did it differently so i figured out uh, how uh, how things are uh, how things should be done the best way so i started with electronics and uh, electronics is really great i feel to learn uh, coding because if you try to learn something uh, that's like web development or app development uh, in that perspective i think you are just trying to do screens so whatever you do is just going to yeah. be on the screen so there's nothing much miraculous that's happening but i think when you do something in electronics there is something that moves as you code and i think you are bringing a non uh, living thing to life uh, by coding and that feeling i think gives you butterflies so i think that was a very good start for me that's how i did it and it never stopped so i kept on marching towards robotics and uh, all that manipulation stuff and uh, our robotic arms drones and everything so that's so that's what i probably did for like the first two years so almost nothing no internship uh, nothing much uh, i think in my first semester i interned at one of uh, my college's own startup uh, it was an ad tech startup by i worked i interned there uh, but nothing uh, nothing much uh, during that phase i just built projects i built a lot of stuff and uh, i used to keep posting them on my private instagram not even like public linkedin or <laughs> anything uh, so apparently uh, there was there was i think it's all, it's very important to have a mentor so a mentor who is yeah. ahead of you in life uh, ahead of the same path that you have taken but he's a long way ahead and uh, your goal should be to reach him and then obviously you have to go for a next mentor because you have reached this goal uh, but yeah. yeah obviously stay in touch with your mentors but uh, so that that's what i did i found out who was the best guy in robotics in india and uh, i i went to him and uh, he was very kind uh, of answering my amateur questions at that time and i i kind of looked back on uh, what i was asking at that point of time and completely amateurish if someone dms me with that today even today i wouldn't probably reply so that kind of uh, i think uh, that it was very kind of him that time and uh, and again once once i reached out to him not much insights right you're not going to get uh, the whole cream out of uh, anyone yeah. so you're probably going to just have that little things he won't share on social media so he wouldn't probably share his secret sauce on social media but he would probably share over dms right so that's the only thing that you got to ask you're not going to ask the same thing that he already does in the social <laughs> media you know post publicly exactly. so that's what i did so i got to understand the uh, nitty gritties of 
you know how things work and how he manages his uh, finances being in college so when you try to do robotics or things like that which involves hardware you obviously have costs that are going to come alongside while building projects mm. so that costs are not going to be that sort of easy for you to get from your parents right and uh, i think they are already paying for your fees or uh, your hostel so trying to get more from them is just going to be a bit more hard and crunching so uh, so i was trying to figure out and i think no one will give you this advice right until you go and dm that guy and figure out how he is doing it right he also come from a middle class background or an upper middle class family and he's somehow fi- uh, you know financing his projects right so i went to him and he said that you know what bro i am uh, he just gave me a gunshot answer nothing beating around the bush or anything he just told me that you know what i go i win hackathons i win competitions <laughs> which are involving robots i get the prize money i reinvest coming to how i found out internships right so i told all these stuff just to establish the fact that projects can get you internships so yeah. i've built a lot of cool things i've built robots that could move autonomously uh, drive autonomously indoor do all that stuff so so it's it's almost uh, the level of tesla right so it's just that it's not outdoor so if you are at that sort of level by your second year now that's when i started doing internships so the same mentor who saw me doing all these projects uh you know said that you know he opened a, a robotics company and it's going very well uh, right now and uh, mm. so he sort of said that you know what we we are hiring someone in the open source space we're probably not going to give you any money uh, but if you do well in your first month we'll probably pay you from the next month i was like okay i am now i'm getting paid for this stuff now i'm getting paid for something that i want to do yeah. every day that i was you know i was like you know ahead of a lot of people who haven't done projects mm, exactly. by that time and not just that i was trying to get my finances right trying to go into competitions this guy is telling me that he'll give me money to build stuff <laughs> not just build stuff and pay me on top of that for building right i was like wow this is crazy i jumped on the opportunity i went on uh, got some goodies and that stuff for doing the open source part great and then i was again i stepped up a lot uh in lot of stuff again it's plain curiosity that that made me step up at the yeah. job that i had and i built a lot of uh stuff for them uh so they ha- they offered uh, at that point of time a robotic lab that was remote so anyone in india from any part of india or any part of the world for that matter could code a robot which is sitting in their laboratory in pune wow. and then you know run the code and they could see how their code runs so a lot of people don't have access to hardware and all the money that uh, mm-hmm. you need to buy exactly. a hardware uh, so you know these guys came up with this stuff that you know you could just code the robot and then you know and it was priced at around 100 rupees per hour or something like that and uh, i think i think that was not a big very uh, very scalable idea uh, they're building uh, robots for industrial purposes i think right now but uh, i interned there and that was my first uh, internship stipend i was paid like 10000 uh, rupees per uh, that next month that i worked and uh, i never stopped so since they gave me uh, an a paid internship i worked more right and mm-hmm. i was like do you, bro do you get paid for this stuff i was i was <laughs> like i don't think who's paying me for this stuff right that was the kind of mind that i had and it's very important i'll talk about why you should do paid internships specifically i'm not talking about uh, the money part here uh, just yet but i'll tell you why you need to do paid internships specifically a lot of people argue that you know you, uh, when you're a student you shouldn't look much over the money part uh, but i'll tell you why it is very important uh, second uh, so once once i did that internship there uh, they offered me 15000 for the next month so i i jumped up on the opportunity again and then i completed that that month as well and uh, then i was sort of sidelining my projects at that point of time and uh, when you sort of work for someone you are probably working on their projects and lot of projects that were my dream dream projects are like uh, indo navigation robot and all that stuff that i wanted to build uh, were halted so i said that, you know what i'll stop it here this is probably where i should stop and uh, that's where i think uh, i stopped uh, but again reflecting on uh, all those experiences and all the sort of uh, stipends that uh, i got uh, so the last one was from baratex 
and again uh, bharat x is a very good uh, paying company 